Hi there, welcome to the Dewey DIY AI channel, where we'll post videos about low-budget machine learning and AI. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe so you'll get more in the future. In this video, we'll do some prep work to set up a Raspberry Pi with total disk encryption. Not really needed for anything machine learning, but I think if a Raspberry Pi is to be used as an edge computing device, its contents should be secured just in case it gets nixed by someone. So to start off, we'll have to image a uh, SD card. We use um, the Raspberry Pi software for that. It's called uh, Raspberry Pi Imager, and you can get it at raspberrypi.org slash software. I have it open here. Uh, just click download for Windows, and it'll download it for you. There we go. Then we install it. Now, to image a uh, SD card with the operating system for Raspberry Pi, we of course also need uh, an image of the operating system. On the same website, you can get those as well. Uh, here's their page. Uh, we use the Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. I'd like, I'd like to uh, download a custom image that does come with the desktop, but that doesn't come with the recommended software. I, I usually don't use that, so I just like to uh, keep it somewhat more uh, minimal. I do want the desktop because I do like to work with the UI at times as well. All right, so we download that. That is a bigger file, so that's going to take a little bit. And I won't let you or make you wait for that. And there we have it uh, all downloaded over here. Let's take a look at that. We are going to have to unzip that. I'll just do it to the desktop right now. And there we have it. Wasn't that great? All right, it should be on desktop now. We'll put it in downloads right here so we can find it later. All right. So next we need to start uh, imaging uh, one of uh, the SD cards that I have. I'm using this type here, Samsung 64 gigabyte SD card or micro SD card. And of course, uh, you'll need uh, something like an SD card uh, reader as well. All right, let's get back here. We'll pick the OS file from this location where we just put it earlier. There we go. We open it. All right. And then storage. I already have the SD card inserted in the reader. So I click that. And then we just select write. It'll wipe it clean. And it'll take a bit. And again, I won't force you to watch all that, so we'll jump to when that it's finished. So once it's all uh, written and verified on the SD card, you get this pop-up here and tells you to remove the SD card. So I click on continue. I am going to remove it. And I'm also going to put it right back in because I want to download a script that is going to set up this SD card now. To do that, let's go to this GitHub uh, website here. Uh, there's a PI boot and a encrypt uh, script. Uh, let's click on this file here, and you'll see the script here. We're gonna. There's all different kinds of ways that you can download this, especially with Git, which is a good way. However, uh, just to keep it simple, we'll do raw here, and we click just uh, right on here, and we do save as. And then we can save it as a boot config of PS1. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can find it right here in the downloads directory. As you can see, it gets saved as a text file, which is not what we want. We do a right click on it and then do a rename and remove that extension because we need it as a PowerScript file. Yes, there we go. Let's close some of these other programs that we still have open here. We don't need them right now. So here and here, and then let's run this script. And then we'll talk about what that does. I always recommend that if you download a script that you're going to run on your uh, computer, uh, inspect it first, see if you uh, trust it or not. As far as I know, I didn't put anything nefarious in there, but always good to verify. PowerShell pops up and it asks you if you want to change any defaults or any, any uh, execution policy. I just leave that as no. And then it starts up the 
the little UI to configure this um, SD card for the uh, Raspberry Pi with some specific settings that I like to use. So we already have uh, the F drive is for me where the SD card is. Um, the standard Pi password for root comes uh, with, I believe, Raspberry is the standard one. I like to uh, change it to something else. Uh, once you boot it up, you'll be uh, asked again. So I'll just type uh, short password here. That's not recommended, but that's just for me to make it easy. Then once this decryption is set up, you'll first log in to enter the decryption uh, passphrase. And for that first login, you'll need a password as well. Again, I'm picking something simple, not really recommended, but just for the sake of speed, that's what I do here. I want to be able to have the uh, Raspberry Pi connect to my network. So uh, my network is called this, the SSID, and my password is this. Then I want to be able to connect remotely to this Raspberry Pi. I'm actually going to run uh, fully headless. So I need to define a host name here that you'll be able to connect to over SSH or uh, VNC. So I'm picking this one as my host name. And then I also need a host name for when the uh, Raspberry Pi is running before the uh, decryption. So I pick that as Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte uh, correct. All right, uh, this is my time zone, language country, and then I hit configure. All right, and that's it. The Raspberry Pi um, SD card is now ready. And when we now put it in a, a Raspberry Pi and boot it up, it'll go through several reboots to actually configure the uh, Raspberry Pi for um, uh, full disk encryption. So we'll take a look at that next. So I've inserted the uh, SD card into a Raspberry Pi, which is turned off right now. And I've uh, connected the video output of the Raspberry Pi to a uh, small USB uh, HDMI capture device. And if everything works OK, it should show here what the Raspberry Pi should normally show on its uh, on its screen. You don't really need this, but uh, just to be able to follow along, that's kind of kind of useful. So. Let's turn it on and see what happens. And then it's doing the first reboot. It takes a bit. It's creating an image that um, uh, we'll use in the next reboot to start uh, encrypting uh, the main uh, disk. Okay, so it's rebooting again, and hopefully now we'll be able to <clears throat> connect to it over SSH. Let's give it a few more seconds. It'll it should connect to the network that um, I defined it earlier. All right, and now it's connected to uh, the Wi-Fi network. I'm going to make this video a little bit bigger so we can better see what we're looking at. There we go. Let's put it into full screen as well. So there we go. So I'm going to have to connect to it um, using SSH uh, because I don't have a keyboard or anything connected directly to this um, uh, Raspberry Pi. So let's set that up as well and then we'll get going. Okay, so we open up a uh, command screen, a command prompt uh, in Windows. Let's type in the following command. SSH, uh, we use root to log in uh, at this stage before the uh, decryption. Um, the host name is Raspi AGB Crypt. And then on my network, it shows up with a dot .lan. The port we're using is 23, uh, which is not the default for SSH, but um, it makes it easier uh, later on. So let's hit enter. It asks me, uh, I want to con keep connecting. Oops, my mistake. I should have typed yes. So let's do that. All right. And then we type in that password that we saw earlier. So now we're logged in to the Raspberry Pi. All we type here is encrypt and it'll start encrypting the main uh, disk 
on the Raspberry Pi. It'll take a long time, probably five minutes or so. So uh, we'll pause here and get back when uh, that is done and we need to enter the passphrase. It's asking for confirmation to go ahead and do the encryption. We have to type uppercase yes, so let's do that. Then we have to enter a passphrase. So this passphrase is needed every time uh, the Raspberry Pi is rebooted and you want to decrypt the um, the main disk for, for basically for usage. So uh, make sure it's a secure passphrase. Should be several words, uh, 13 to 20 characters. Doesn't have to be a password. It can be a sentence or whatever. And make sure you can remember it. And then type it in again. Okay, did not match, I make a mistake, so I do it again. It's being too fast probably, and have a typo. There we go. So now it's wiping the space it freed up. Don't think that's an issue. And we'll let it run for a bit and get back when it is done. Okay, so it did the encryption already. That was pretty fast. Now we have to enter that passphrase so it can uh, unlock it. So let's do that. Again, that was the same passphrase that I just entered a few seconds ago. And now it's creating uh, the file system in an encrypted manner. So let's give it a little bit and we'll get back uh, when there's the next step to do. Again, this will take several minutes, probably five minutes or so. All right, the encryption totally finished. So now it's rebooting into normal mode. And as you can see already in the background, it started up uh, the regular UI. If I had a keyboard and everything connected to the Raspberry Pi, I could just log in, but I don't because I want to run this headless. Okay, before we connect, over VNC, we need to connect over SSH to reset the password for the regular Pi user, as that's required on first uh, boot up. So let's do that here. Let's connect. This is the regular domain na name that we use whenever the Raspberry Pi is uh, in unlock mode. So there we go. What's the password? That's the simple one we tapped up at the beginning. And then we need to modify it. So. Okay, let's pick a new one. All right, so now it's updated. We could log in again just to check it, make sure, type in the new password here. And there we are, we're logged in. Okay, I'm wanting to log in over uh, VNC. So let's open that next. So we're using VNC to connect to um, the Raspberry Pi at this uh, domain name here, raspi8gb.lan. So let's do that real quick. Pops up the login screen. Username is pi. Password is the new password we entered. I'll make it remember it. Okay. And then here's our uh, VNC connection. Uh, this is now directly controlled here uh, from my uh, Windows PC. So it will have me log in here as well. And then there you have it, we are logged in. On the background, you still see uh, the HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, captured uh, to my PC. But let's close that. We don't really need that anymore. So here we are, we can open command prompts. And so basically we're logged in now over VNC with a uh, almost fully automated setup for the Raspberry Pi. And also while working on a disc, uh, the main disc of the Raspberry Pi that is uh, fully encrypted. So now let's take a look at the normal case where a Raspberry Pi with an encrypted disk is turned off. 
we turn it on and then see what steps you need to go through to unlock that disk and make the Raspberry Pi useful. So let's turn it on first. We'll have to wait a little bit for it to connect to the network. Uh, it might take a minute or two, so let's just give it some time. And then once it's connected, we can connect to it over SSH to the uh, encrypted version of the host name that we set up for this purpose. To know whether or not it is on the network, I just try to uh, connect with SSH to it and then I may or may not get a connection. And if I don't get the connection yet, I just try it again. But it is able to connect now. So uh, let's type in the password. That is wrong. There we go. And then now the step is to unlock the uh, main encrypted disk. Uh, the command is as follows. Script root hyphen unlock, hit enter, and it'll ask for the password, uh, the passphrase. We enter that, and then it goes through a sequence where it boots up. And we'll have to wait a bit for that. It'll get into the normal mode. Same here, to know whether it connected or not, we just uh, try to connect with it over VNC. And if it works, it's, co it's uh, connected to the network. If not yet, then we just have to wait a little longer. So let's try that here. The screen pops up right here. So let's log in. As you can see, the screen is pretty small uh, because it's running now fully headless. So we can do a quick fix for that with preferences, screen configuration, and then configure. We pick the right resolution, which we want to be this one, and we click here on OK. And now it's set up to uh, the larger resolution is, of course, much more workable. That's just a one time thing. So. In short, that's the way to do it. Turn it on, log in with SSH to the host name that was set up for decryption, log in there, do the unlock command, and then wait till it uh, connects to the network again, and then you can just log in to it via uh, VNC. And that's about it. Hope to catch you next time on some more trials that we're doing with the Raspberry Pi and uh, making it useful for AI and machine learning. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys later.